Are you flexible but still feel really tight? Can you move your arms all the way behind your ears, no problem, but you have shoulder issues? Do your elbows bend further back instead of a straight line? Can your thumb touch your forearms when you're doing this? Do your hips go out in all of these directions and it still feels really, really tight? If the answer is yes to a few of these, you might just be hypermobile. And I'm actually gonna ask you to stop stretching and see what happens. Let's talk about hypermobility. What up good people, Andy Shea from Loom Marie Bowen and today we're gonna to be talking about an interesting topic called hypermobility. And I feel like it's really important because out of just the people that I've trained, about two out of 10 people will come in and they're hypermobile and they still have a lot of pain. Now we can be hypermobile in multiple joints. Sometimes people have global hypermobility as in every single joint is just super flexible, double jointed and all of that type of stuff. Now others only have hypermobile joints in one or two areas as in either a really hypermobile shoulder or a hip, which is also creating a lot of instability. And that's mainly what I'm gonna be talking about today. Let's take the shoulder for example. Many of the times we think that the shoulders feel really really tight and it just needs to be stretched but if you stretch it all the time and it still feels chronically tight but it also feels unstable at the same time that's usually what hypermobile means. Now a hypermobile joint essentially is just the joint is slightly further out of the socket than a normal socket. So for example my shoulder we have the labrum over here which is where the humerus joins into it and a good ideal joint it's evenly spaced between the entire joint so the, the body can move freely and it still feels really, really stable. Now a hypermobile joint literally just means that it is further out of the socket. Now because it's further out of the socket, it can shear around a little bit more. So what happens is that when it's moving around so much, these tendons and ligaments are literally pulling tighter and holding on for dear life, trying to prevent it from dislocating at a second to second basis with all those movements. And so many other times the muscles around that joint feels really, really tight. And the more you stretch it, it feels good temporarily. But then as soon as you stop stretching, it feels like it's tightened back up or sometimes it makes it even worse. And that's because this, the brain hates being stretched because it's more in threat of keeping it from dislocating. So as soon as you stop stretching, it's gonna pull it tighter to bring it back to the socket as close as it can be in order to protect it from further harm. So for example, a normal shoulder has about range of motion about here. Now when you're hypermobile, the arms might flay right behind your head and over here, it feels really, really tight. But that's also because you're stretching it further than what the body wants you to stretch. If you can't stabilize at that far range of motion, then the body's gonna sense threat there, hence it's gonna tighten up to, to prevent it from going any further. Most of the times when you're hypermobile, you feel tight but unstable at the same time, and it just feels off in that joint. And that's because the joint does not know that it, where to be so it's always floating out in space now if you actually give it what it needs as in stabilizing that joint by pulling it closer to the socket the brain goes oh that feels good and it feels looser because it's more stable that's what you're looking for stability is key in this scenario and stretching most of the times is not very beneficial now how do we fix that it's going to take some time but i'm going to show you a couple of things and the ground is probably going to be your best friend if you think about it Babies are born hypermobile. All their joints are loose as heck and they have zero stability. And they learned how to use the ground in order to gain stability. And many other times we're not connected with the floor, hence we are less stable. Let's just focus on the shoulder joint today. If you look at this position over here, it's very suboptimal for that joint to be in this area. So when I'm here, the shoulders are rotating forward, the head is dipping down, but this is usually where we are most of the times because this is our current lifestyle. And if you're looking at the shoulder joint in this position, the trap is pulling it up and the shoulder is rotating forward. So it's actually pinching in the front socket and it's actually further away from the back socket. So it's almost like shearing here, which is why many times if you're doing push-ups and we're going into these areas, we're feeling that pinch in that front of the shoulder. Instead of learning that this is where the shoulder needs to be in space, as in pulling back down and extending that upper torso where the lats over here can actually engage. Once you've found the lat, this would be your best friend in regards to shoulder stability because the lat is the main muscle down here that pulls the shoulder closer to the socket and then drops the entire shoulder down so that it can anchor. And then once that's set, 
then all the muscles around it can move a little bit more freely. Try this out. I want you to roll your shoulders forward and try to move the arm. Now try, drop that shoulder, elevate your chest and engage that armpit and move the arm. You should be able to move it further if you know how to engage that properly. And that's what these exercises are for. The more your hands can engage with the ground and learn to push into the floor, rotate so that the entire arm and the humerus can connect down into that lat, add some pull to stabilize that shoulder so you're connecting the lat to the core, engaging, learning how to rock back and forth in this position, just like a baby, how we learned how to just start moving, crawling with the shoulders down over here with a nice long and extended back, instead of crawling over here. This is probably where we will be in the beginning where the shoulders are rounded forward, back is arched, head is down or just pinching in the neck, instead of dropping that shoulder down away from the ears, pushing into the ground and elevating. Finding positions like this and then learning how to be able to drive away from the floor, stabilize, pivot without the shoulder rotating forward. The more we can teach the joint how to drive away, engage that lat and add torque through that lat to stabilize the entire shoulder capsule, the more stable the joint is going to be. Many of the times we use bands or kettlebells and stuff like that and we're holding it in the air, but the body responds with the ground better. I'd highly recommend to teach the body how to move along with the ground first and then using bands to stabilize the shoulder joint and holding things up in the air as a secondary towards that. Because if we don't know how to drop that shoulder and anchor into the lat, and navigate our entire body weight around it, having something suspended in the air that's only a few pounds is gonna be much less beneficial than engaging your entire body weight with your shoulder joint on the ground. Now, word of caution, it does take a lot of time for you to start feeling this because if you have a true hypermobile joint, you're most probably born with it. So it's years and years, possibly decades of poor movement practices that's been creating that tension and pain in the beginning. So have, be patient with it and teach your joint how to move the right way. Hire some assistance if possible. I highly recommend you to do that first because there's a difference in seeing it in front of a camera versus actually feeling it when someone's poking and prodding and guiding you in the right direction. Even for myself, I've had multiple coaches correct me and every single coach teaching me something slightly different and that's where the true value in training is. So hopefully this exposed something about hypermobility that we might not be aware of. If this resonates with you, please share this with your friends and leave me a comment if you have any questions or concerns. Andy Schiff from Boom Reborn. Have an awesome day. Peace.